Hello and welcome to Aussie LEGO Reviews. Today I'll be reviewing the 8038 Battle of Endor set. The set includes 890 pieces, 12 minifigures. 12 minifigures. It was released in 2009 as a 10th anniversary set, 10 year anniversary set. And if you'd like to get this brand new, it's going to cost you $380 to $440 sealed in the box. And if you'd like to get it used, it's gonna cost you $290 to $350. Before I go into this set, I will firstly say that there are a lot of playability features as you can see. These, which I'll show you later in the video. Two Scout speeder bikes. The Endor Catapult. The Endor Mod for itself. And the ATST. From the last video's ATST review, I've got to say that there were some improvements. Two years later, the head looks a lot better. And without further ado, let's get on to the minifigures. Starting off on minifigures, we have got R2-D2 in the set. Uh, actually, this was the start of the moving from the silver, silver R2-D2 phase into the just grey face printed one. We spin them around. You got some extra detailing. I kind of like the silver one, but the features on this one are a lot bigger. You can see them a lot better. You can see a disc drive. If we spin around his face, you can see that, like the eye, eye scanning sockets, and all the front, front printing on there. It's a lot better than the silver one. No back printing because I don't think R2 D2 has got back printing. The same legs, same body, and same head, just different colours and different contrasts. Next off for the minifigures, we have got Leia Organa and or and I'm not calling her Princess Leia because she does not really look like a princess. She's got unique back printing. We turn her around. She's actually exclusive to this set. We spin her around. No arm printing or leg printing. But the torso actually represents a cool looking crease, creased printing in a, in a torso. We turn it back, there's just folds everywhere. I reckon it's really detailed. The hair piece, I like. The face is plain, but when you move up into the modern years like 2018 and 2019, you, get, you start to see better faces with better printing. Now moving on to the iconic Han Solo. We spin him around, he's got the, just the plain Moss Isley printing. We got the back printing, there's nothing there. No leg printing, just plain brown legs. Tanned arms. The torso printing is just, it's pretty, pretty plain, but that's what you'd expect. You got the belt printing and the little strap on the legs. The plain, smooth brown hair. Until these years, you have the new hair from Solo, which is the more wavy hair, and the plain face printing. Now looking at Chewbacca, it's got the same... Chewbacca's a weird one. He's got a brown body, brown legs, brown arms, and brown hands. But his head, or whatever you'd like to call it, it's, it's kind of a mold, I'll show you. See, it's kind of a full thing of a torso with the printing on there, the back printing, lots of ammo, his face, nose, all in one, all in one thing. Now looking into the Ewoks, we've got Chief Chirper, which we don't really get to see in the movie, but all of the Ewoks have the same head mold thing as Chewbacca, it kind of morphs into the torso. He's holding a a royal staff thing that can just be made out of normal pieces. There is nothing unique to this staff. Now looking at the cute and cuddly wicket. It's got the same printing as Chief Chap, but just different colours. Let's have a look. Got a brown body, brown arms, brown hands, 
and an orange headscarf instead of a red one with kind of the brown fur as you can see and the same face printing for Chief Chirpa, just different body colour. Now the final Ewok, Paplu. I don't think you get to see him in the movie, or if you do, I'm pretty sure that Paplu dies. I think you see he's got he's actually got some leaves, leaves on his headscarf if you can see that. Basic tan, tan headscarf as well, and the same body as Wicket and the same head printing as well. Now coming up to some of my favourite minifigures in this set. We are getting the two Rebel Commandos. I'm only showcasing this one because the only difference with the other Rebel Commando is the face. We've got the backpack piece with the little leaf, leaf looking thing. There is back printing, but it's kind of the same as the torso printing, just with extra ammo belts. This torso printing is actually really well detailed for 2009, I reckon. You got the face printing and the normal Endor Rebel helmet. Now moving on to my favourite favourite minifigure in the set. We've got the Scout Trooper. I don't know what it is. It's probably the helmet. I just that helmet mold. I love it so much. We turn around. We've got the basic armor armor in the front. We've got two pockets. Just plain white legs, white arms, and no printing on the back. Last but not least, we have got the Death Star Trooper. You can see on the front, we have got little folds. Looks like an armor plate and a silver belt buckle. It's got a similar face to the Rebel Troopers that I reviewed in the Rebel Scout Speeder. Instead of a gray, gray helmet like they do have on Hoth, this guy's got black. Take his helmet off. No dual expression. We turn them around just a plain face printing and a lot of people like this dude the best out of the set but if i put these two side by side death star trooper from 2009 death star trooper from 2016. now that we've finished looking at the minifigures i'll be having a look at the actual buildings of the set I'll be going worst to first, not that anything bad in this set, just what I think in my opinion is probably the my least favourite. We've got the Ewok catapult. You can see we've got some leaf back and leaf detailing. Mainly made out of wood. More leaves, big stones, and a spear to go on there. Now you can catapult these either using this, but I prefer just flipping this. And this this works really well. I'll, I'll do this now. That just came next to my seat. We've got that there. That's the Ewok catapult. Now we bring over the Scout speeders. They're both the same, nothing too special about them. But what I really like about them is the front detailing of these. We've got two two blasters. We've got the throttles, this little old style blaster there i don't know what that would be used for and the back backpack on the back and the two little ski things we'll move those over we'll bring over the atst now wow like i said in the intro this was an improvement from 2007. if we have a look we have one flick fire missile We've got these two 360 degrees rotating turrets, which could be used for air or ground. And we've got the main blasters, which can be adjusted fully downwards or almost upwards. And there are two ways of opening the top of the ATST. We've got this one, so you can fit minifigures in. We close that. Then there is the normal hatch, which you can keep open or closed. The only thing I do not like about this is if we spin the ATST around, or well, this Technic piece, it makes it makes it look like an idiot. And you'll see what I mean. I'll put this on the stand. 
Okay, now that this is on the stand, I'll show you what this Technic piece does. This was supposed to replicate an ATST walking. What is this? What? What? What is that? It's it's sprinting. It doesn't even have the walking motion. If you'd like to play with it normally, you're gonna have to kind of go, like move the legs manually. But even that, that's it does not have a realistic representation. Now we have a look at the Andor Bunker. Wow, I appreciate all the detail that they did with this set. We'll move all the rest of these things over. We'll take a main look. Now, first things first, it, it, looks, it looks very, very realistic to the movie. Now you can see the doors in there. If we go inside, we can actually Move the doors closed or open, as you can see, which I reckon is a really cool feature. All the plates look really nice. We go to the back, we can see the inside for the shield generator, the two seats if you'd like to put a Death Star Trooper. It's a shame that they didn't add more Death Star Troopers in here, but I'm fine with 12 minifigures. And before I show you what these do, you can see that the Endor Bunker actually folds out. So you can have a longer one, have the control center there. If anything, if I'm, I prefer it not angled out, but if I'm going to have it angled out, I'll have it just on a slight angle like this, as you can see. And they made it an easy build because all of these panels were just slot in. As you can see, they just slot in like that. And now, the moment that some of you may have been waiting for, what do these do? Now what these do is, they make it, if you, if you want to blow up the bunker, you have the choice. I'll press these down. They, because it's a bit old, they pop out of the sides, you can see, but then if you'd like to reset it, you just slot these back in. Now finished with the set, we can have a look at the instructions slash box art. Now I don't really, I'd prefer the 2007 ATST box art over this one, but this isn't bad. You can see that the ground, the trees in the background, and apologies, I couldn't find the little glider thing that Wicked or Papalu rides, but I don't, uh, it's pretty insignificant anyway. But this book is the one we'll be looking at. There are two instructions, one having just all the things to build, and this one having the main features at the very back. And this one doesn't open up like a from side to side, you've got to open it up like this. And we'll look at the Lego Star Wars, the Clone Wars page, the event of the class, the Anakin's Y Wing, which I'm actually selling. Can have a look at the 2009 sets. All of the minifigures in this set, or maybe not all of them, we've got four, eight, oh, all of them. We've got some more sets from the year, more Clone Wars, and Darth Vader's Tide Advanced. Let's have a look, this one is a lot more detailed because of the size of the set. We can have a look at way more features. We got the foldable features, you can see putting them back to normal, and the sides blowing off with that feature. Got the doors opening, flick farm missile of the ATST, the dumb Technic mechanic. Inside the Scout Troopers and the Death Star Trooper, the Catapult with the Ewoks, and the Death Star Trooper running for a gun. We go to the very back, we see the pieces list, and the final product. Coming to the end of this review now, I like to ask myself, is this set worth your money? And although this set is very very expensive compared to this being 80 I don't know if it was 80 or 100 dollars back back in 2009 but right now for 
For $390, I, I would get this set. For the 12 minifigures you get, it's actually, it's not bad. And you get a lot of features as well, and for a 10th anniversary set, it's, it's pretty good. But when it's getting up to the 400, 400s, I'd, I wouldn't get it because that is getting a bit pricey. Used, definitely. If you're getting this used, there's no stickers in this set, so there's nothing to worry about. For 290 to 350, it's not bad. Not bad at all. Have a look inside, we can have a look at all the minifigures doing their part. Chewbacca, we can on the Scout, Scout Speedo thing. And there. Again, sorry I couldn't make the video on Wednesday, but I hope I made it up to you by making this video. If you enjoyed, please leave a like, and I'll see you in the next review.